Let me take you back. For some like me, this will be far back. For some, not so long ago. And for some, it may be happening right now. Back to your school days, to simpler times where the worst thing to weigh in your mind was acing a test. A time where you met new kids and interacted with them to learn about the world, others, and yourself. And a time where you might find a certain something for the very first time. Something you may not understand, something you may doubt yourself on, and something that may even scare you. But also something very precious. First love. That is a story of teasing master Takagi-san. Mmm, kind of. Yeah, you might not think it at first while watching episode one. He's setting up a prank for his seat neighbor, grinning ever so while doing it. Before he can finish, he assists her in opening her case. <laughs> yeah, this is a typical day for Nishikata. <laughs> Every day he has to deal with the teasing master herself, Takagi-san. Nishikata tries his hardest to get back at her, but she always is one step ahead of him. The fun of the show is how freaking good she is at it. In the entire run of the show, I could only count on one hand the amount of times I was able to guess how each scenario would end, or how she would dupe him. This girl can read this guy like a book, which I guess isn't really that impressive since he is so terrible at hiding his expressions. But every day, Nishikata tries his darnest to get back at her. The main goal? To make her blush the way he does every day because of her. Now you may be wondering at this point, Cole, you said this was a story of first love. This doesn't sound like that kind of story. Sounds more like bullying to me. Well, maybe this will change your mind. After another failed attempt that backfires, Nishikata has his head down in shame when... Yep, this shot is the one I saw in the preview video that I watched, and it hooked me in. But I feel the need to address something that was on my mind during the first episode. Something I'm sure some of you already are thinking, and I want to bring it up just to help clear the air about it. Yeah, that shot caught my attention. It's a feeling I can relate to. I mean, opening your eyes and seeing a cute girl looking back at you and smiling, it hits those emotional strings for sure. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to check out the show, but there's something I just couldn't shake about her. The fact that she's a middle schooler. <laughs> yeah, I know, this is an odd nitpick of all things, but I feel so uncomfortable with this being in middle school. I mean, with, with shows about falling in love, romance, or whatever is going on, I find it less awkward because the characters in shows about high school are just... They are drawn to look more adult most of the time, and anyone can look back at their high school experience and put themselves in their shoes. But she doesn't look like an adult. She very much looks like a kid. A kid with a constant bedroom eye expression. Ugh, just don't seem right. Well, if you had the same thought, then take it from the guy who watched the entire show. They never push anything too far with this. I'm actually amazed at how reserved they were with this character. They never once do any sort of fan service with her. At least nothing that sticks out. And this is even more amazing when you learn that there's an episode where Tatagi-san makes Nishikata help her after losing a bet by having her choose a swimsuit for her. And yes, I know what I said, but this scene is not fan service. It is actually the most tame thing I've ever seen. It does just enough to get the point across on how awkward this is for Nishikata. Now, if the whole premise of the show sounds like it could be repetitive fast, they do help break it up with having moments with other students from the class. These moments focus on three girls. Yukari, an overachieving, no-nonsense girl. Sane, a non-expressive, low-energy girl who constantly has the look of someone who's about to fall asleep. And... Oh, <sighs> Mina, who clearly is never tired. By the way, side note here, what is up with the thick eyebrows this season? From the start, I figured they would have a typical structure of an anime slice-of-life comedy show. Mina would do something loud and obnoxious, Yukari would act irritated, and Sane will... I guess she'd be like the Mai of the group. You know, the troll. Turns out these moments with these three are never really that over the top. They're simple, slightly humorous moments. Like where Mina tries to drink coffee to be more adult, or when they follow our two leads to see if they're a couple, or... 
今日の夜はうちで食べるの、uh, いやー、仕事次第やな。Um, 遅くなったらまた次郎と食って帰るわ。Uh, uh, the, what, what is this? We have talking cats now? This is an odd thing to. Oh, 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 oh it, it's, 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 it's them doing voices. Oh, okay. Never mind. Now let's take a deeper look at our two main characters. First, Takagi san. Now we'll admit that sometimes the teasing from her can seem a bit more like bullying. There's also times where she can seem a bit cocky with her laughing. <laughs> But there's one thing to note about it, the majority of the time she teases him. Sometimes she just says something reassuring, like after teasing him by the pool. And most of the time, her last tease in the scene has a bit of a flirty edge to it. The most extreme in this is when Tatagi san forgets her umbrella and Niskata has to share his with her. She begins inquiring him about not remembering a word, ai ai gasa, which basically means love umbrella from what I gather, and what couples say to each other. Her sly look as she questions him why he squirms shows she knows exactly what she's doing. But I know what some of you are thinking right now. She's just a mature girl teasing a less mature guy over his anxiety. This teasing doesn't mean anything. Well, let me show you something I noticed about the bathing suit scene. At one point while Tatagi is busy changing, some other classmates show up and Ishikata hides. When Tatagi pulls back the curtain, she notices the students. But see what she does when she notices that there's another guy in the room. Ah, Takagi-chan! Mano-chan! Nakai-kun! See how she covered up when she noticed him? Isn't it strange given that she was just with Nishikata trying on swimsuits and she seemed to have no problem showing off to him? I believe this is a sign that those swimsuits were not just meant for any guy. She was choosing exclusively to show off to Nishikata. She wanted to be for his eyes only. And I know this because in another scene when Nishikata tries to take a candid picture of her and fails, she still tells him to not show the picture to anyone else. But hey, that's just a theory, an anime theory. Okay, I'll stop. Then there's our main boy, Nishikata. A character that may make or break the show for you, depending on how you look at things. For me, I did see myself in this character a lot. In fact, it totally would have been me back in my school days if I was facing a girl like Tataki. So I liked him for the most part. But even I found myself at times yelling, Christ, Sinji, get in the freaking robot! I mean, this dude cannot handle this girl at all. He either completely gets fooled by her traps, or he gets what's going on and has some good comebacks to use, but is too much of a wuss to say them or pull them off. You see, Sinji, I, I mean, Nishikata, well, his biggest problem is that he's actually, in all things, a nice guy. He can't bring himself at times to combat Tatagi because his responses in his head are too mean to him. But why does he put up with her every day anyway? Well, as I hinted at the start of this video, this is a story about first love. But Nishikata doesn't realize it. Or at least he's in complete denial about it. As the audience, you realize this, and therefore you want to root for him to succeed in either finally getting back into Takisan or finally realizing his feelings. Now, being a spoiler free review, I can't tell you how that turns out. All I can say is moments in the last two episodes make the whole series totally worth it. But I also have to warn you to not look up any info on this show, especially not on the manga it's based on. Basically, because this manga has a sequel. And the cover of that series basically gives away the fate of these characters. Teasing Master Tatagi san is a sweet, funny, and heartwarming look at childhood first love and is guaranteed to land a critical hit on your heartstrings. 
Hey Addicts and Fanatics, thank you so much for watching this video. It took me a while to finally get this review going the right direction and I apologize it took so long to get done. Sadly this will be the last one for a while as I have another project I want to do and it's going to take some time to get that done itself. So in the meantime you'll be seeing a lot more Let's Plays pop up to fill the void. And a reminder to all of you that I am still planning to start a Patreon to help support the show to hopefully become a full time thing. If you'd like that help then share this video or subscribe if you haven't already. I'll start the Patreon as soon as this channel reaches 600 subscribers. But for now, I'm Cole Yerlau, saying as always, stay animated.